Welcome to Virtual Office Hours, How to Improve Second Semester Grades. The Virtual Office Hours series connects you with experts to help you thrive as a law student and prepare for life after law school. We're really excited today to have Professor Don Young with us to talk about this timely topic and to answer your questions. Professor Young is Director of Academic Skills Program, Adjunct Professor and Writing Specialist at IIT Chicago Kent College of Law. In her role, Professor Young develops and implements the Law School's Academic Success Program, where she works closely with students in maximizing their learning and achievement in law school. She manages and supervises the Law School's teaching assistants for first-year doctoral courses and selected upper-level courses. She also serves as the Law School's Writing Specialist, providing students with strategies to improve their legal writing skills. Professor Young holds a BA in English from Boston University, JD from Syracuse University College of Law, and LLM from Boston University School of Law. Professor Young, we'll turn things over to you now. Thank you so much, Tracy. I'm so happy to be here. Um, this is a timely topic, and I'm excited to share some uh, tips and strategies on how you can improve uh, your second semester grades. So what I thought I would do is just kind of give you a roadmap of where we're going to be headed today. Um, a little introduction of, you know, why, why are you here? Why did you decide to sign up for the ABA webinar? And then um, what we're going to do is we're going to look back in order to move forward. In other words, we're going to be looking at um, our last semester's exam performance. And then we're going to take a look at um, last semester's learning. So, um, and then we're going to talk about how we can develop an action plan to attack this semester. So with that said, you know, why did you decide to come to this webinar? You know, um, this is the time of year when it's, you know, it's cold outside, depending on where you live. I'm here in Chicago, so it's, it's pretty chilly. And, you know, this is the time when most first years have received their first semester grades. And so, you know, like this uh, law student here, taking a look at um, the grades that are posted, you know, you can tell on the look on his face that he may be confused, disappointed. Um, others of you have received your grades and, and feeling a sigh of relief or excitement about it, you know, getting excited about what's ahead. And others are really confused, you know, they worked really, really hard and they don't know what happened. And um, they feel like the grades don't reflect um, what they did to prepare for, for the exams. So you probably are feeling maybe one or two or all three of these emotions and that's, and that's completely normal. Um, but, and, it, and it's fair to assume that most of you are used to some measure of academic success. Um, you know, in undergrad or if you worked before, um, you know, obviously law school, the law school that accepted you saw some uh, trait in you and, and decided to accept you into their program um, because they believe that you have the ability to succeed. So your first semester grades may have been quite a departure from what, what you've seen in you know, prior years. And, and if you're disappointed, you know, your thoughts may start falling into a negative spiral. And this negative spiral goes something like this. It's your thought process. Oh, I'm a lousy student. I'm gonna fail out of law school. I don't belong here. I'm not smart enough. I'm doomed to be a terrible lawyer. No one's ever gonna hire me. I'm, I'm going to end up in a job that I'll hate for the rest of my life um, and so forth and so on. So your thoughts may going, be going down that negative spiral. So if it does, I'm here to tell you to stop. Stop that thought process of catastrophizing. Um, you wanna stop these sort of, um, thoughts in your head, you want to want to make sure that you don't go further down the wrong road. So the question is, you know, how can we do this, right? How can we stop these negative thoughts, which will negatively impact 
our uh, second semester. So there are three ways. The first is to recognize that these feelings are just thoughts. They're not reality. And uh, one way to combat that is to ask yourself, you know, is this catastrophic thought real right at this moment? Am I really doomed to be a terrible lawyer? So, you know, check the evidence. What does the evidence show? Do you have, uh, what does the evidence, um, is, is there anything, is there any truth in that? Are you really gonna be a terrible lawyer? Probably not, right? The second thing that I recommend is to really put it into perspective. You know, you've just started your law school journey. You've been thrown into this rigorous curriculum, a new style of writing, the Socratic method, cold calling. You've taken exams that were unlike anything that you've ever experienced before. And you've been up a very, very tough grading curve where very few A's are given. So put that into perspective. The third thing that I recommend is that you take action, take inventory of the positive. So when we go down that negative train of thoughts, we tend to magnify uh, the worst case scenario, right? So instead, take inventory of both the negative, but then the positive aspects of the situation for a more realistic assessment of your situation. Uh, focus your energies on what you can do now to move forward. So if you've made that decision, if you're here in this webinar and you've, you've said to yourself, you know what, I'm going to do what it takes to improve. You know, I, I'm, I'm ready to conquer second semester. So if you've made that decision, you need to understand that you'll have to devote time learning about what went wrong and then develop a strategy and then put in the extra effort. But most importantly, above all, you'll have to be humble and honest with yourself. And so when we're honest about uh, our setbacks, I tell you, this is so important. They are rich opportunities for growth. If we're truly humble and honest and being truthful about, um, about why we went down the wrong path in terms of preparation for the exams. When you are honest about that, many, many, many good things can sprout out from it. Um, so another thing that I wanted to say in terms of an introduction is that disappointing grades are not NOT, an indication of poor ability or your lack of intelligence. Instead, Grades actually can give us information right at this very moment that our current approach is not really working. And this is the time to try something else. So let's unpack the ways that you can learn from last semester so that you can attack this semester. So we're going to move into this um, looking back to move forward. That's sort of my theme for the talk. And when we look back, we're looking back at last semester's exam performance. So what I recommend that you do is to review your exam answers, the graded answers, and obtain your professor feedback. And this is an incredibly effective learning tool, but it's so hard for students to do. And I get it. It's so hard because professors are big and scary, right? Um, but I have to say that the professors here, Professor Boni Sanz and Professor Baker from Chicago Kent, they don't look that scary, right? They're humans. They're not, you know, big, big and scary and robot. They're not robotic. They're people. And um, I think it's hard for students to approach professors because, you know, by looking at these people right now, if I took Kathy Baker's property course and if I didn't do well, and I had to, you know, I said to myself, I had to meet with her to, to you know, review my exam. I wanted to know where I went wrong. Um, she's kind of a reminder, right, of, of my disappointing grade. She's a reminder of my lost confidence. And I just, I just want to avoid those negative feelings. So I'll just skip it, you know. Um, so 
this is why it's hard for students to do. And I totally understand that. But at the same time, um, it's important to understand that communicating with students is really what they get paid to do. I mean, that's part of their job. Students, um, they help professors become better teachers. And you know, your professors are really invested in your success. They want you to succeed. I know that when I have a student come to me and they wanna talk about their, um, their performance on a, a writing, you know, uh, on a contract that they, they submitted and they're not happy with the grade what they wanna know what went wrong. Um, I'm, you know, I want them to do better. It, it's, it's why I decided to teach, right? It gives me joy and satisfaction. I want to usher these students along to success. So, so these are not big and scary professors. They're here because they really want you to be successful. So always remember that um, when you're nervous about approaching your professor. Um, so here's my recommendation. The first thing you wanna do is ask for a copy of your graded exam answer and uh, review it carefully. Pay attention to any comments that your professor makes. Um, now, if your professor provides it, ask for a sample model answer um, or you know, a feedback memo or a grading rubric, anything that you can get your hands on to help you, you know, compare and contrast. So review those items critically and compare it against your exam answer to identify any differences. So uh, that's what I recommend that you do. Um, second, you're gonna make an appointment with your professor to discuss your exam answers and you're going to prepare for that meeting uh, to really get the most out of it. Um, make a list of questions before, make some observations, and then send them to your professor. You know, email your professor and attach a copy of your exam answer along with the list of questions. And um, so that your professor is also prepared, you know, time is valuable. So if you have 30 minutes with your professor, you want to get straight to the point. Um, and if your professor is prepared and you're prepared, your meeting with your professor is going to be very robust. The third thing you should do is, you know, during the meeting, listen to your professor with an open mind. This is probably the most important point I wanted to make here, uh, because when you have an open mind, um, you're, you, you go into that meeting with the, the right frame. Um, remember the purpose of the exam review, it's not to make you feel bad. It's to help you prepare for future exams. So really this isn't the time to argue or get defensive of your grade, complain, or even challenge your grade. Um, you wanna make sure that your attitude is in the right place, that you have that open mind to get the feedback from your professor. This is a great opportunity for you. And um, I wanted to, to kind of go on a sideline and, and talk about feedback and why it's so important. Um, you know, there were some professors from the University of Minnesota Law School, Professor Schwartz and Forganis, and they conducted a study on first years. Uh, certain sections of students were given individualized feedback on practice exams in a course, and then other sections of the first year class were not. They were not given feedback. Um, after controlling a number of factors like LSAT scores, undergrad GPA, gender, et cetera, uh, what they found was uh, very, very uh, interesting. The experimental group outperformed the control group. Um, that group, the experimental group, saw their grades increase by a third um, in all of their classes. So in every single one of their classes, they saw an increase in their grades. So a one-third increment is like, you know, uh, turning a B plus into an A minus. So that's pretty significant. And, you know, the, the study isn't terribly surprising, right? Because, I mean, you'd think if you do get feedback, you are going to improve. But what's interesting about this study is that, you know, they, 
they got the feedback in one course, but then when they applied it and they learned from it, it started affecting every single other course that they were taking. So I think what happened was the students were seeing patterns, right? Patterns in, in how to structure their exam answer and how to issue spot and how to um, apply the rule to the facts, et cetera, et cetera. So that is why I find the study pretty remarkable. Uh, you can find this in the, the uh, Journal of Legal Education, but um, I, uh, it's an important point about feedback. So feedback doesn't come just from your professors. Feedback can come from other sources. It can come um, from your teaching assistants. It can come from your peers. It can come from you, yourself, when you do your own self-evaluation, self-assessment. Um, but the reality is that most students will take the path of least resistance. And uh, the reality is that most students won't get any feedback at all. They think, you know what, first semester is done. Um, I'm just gonna study harder. And um, meeting with my professor and going over an exam where the professor is not gonna change the grade, well, why should I do it? It's a waste of time. I'm just gonna focus on this semester and I'm gonna focus on this, mastering the substantive part of the law. But the problem with that is that it, uh, it, it gives you less bang for your buck, right? Everybody has to understand the baseline of the black letter law of understanding the substantive part of the substantive law. But there's another, um, there's another very, very important part of all of this and it's to master the law school exam. It's mastering how to take a law school exam. And, um, you know, I know that all of you are, you know, we're graded on a curve. And so I encourage you to be the, like this orange balloon, be a little bit different. Don't do what everybody else is going to do. Take that extra step of mastering the law exam by getting the feedback from your professors, by learning about what went wrong so that when you're doing it this time, you do it right. So you want to be the student that is this orange balloon that gets the insights, that understands that this is a skill that can be developed. It's not something you either have it or you don't. You're either a good law student or you're not a law student. It is definitely skill a skill like riding a bike. You can get better at it. You, can, you definitely can. It just takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of hard work, and it takes a lot of feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> So it's, I always tell my students this one line, you got to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable and you will see uh, dramatic growth. You know, just so say that to yourself. Um, okay, so what I thought I would do is, is give you some, it's almost like, like diagnosing yourself, you know, questions to ask yourself. Um, when you are reviewing your exams um, and, and you're trying to diagnose the, the areas that you have problems with. So one thing that you can ask, um, and you'll see this I because, you know, that's that analytical paradigm that you learned in legal writing, the IRAC formula, issue, issue rule, application, right, uh, conclusion. So here's the big I, the issue. Did I spot all of the issues? Did I spot um, all of the sub issues? And another question you could ask, did I spend too much time on undisputed issues instead of spending more time on the disputed ones? So that's what you could um, ask yourself in terms of the I. Now we're gonna go into the R. You know, another question you can ask is, did I include all the applicable rules? You know, did I include all the elements? Did I include any exceptions to the rules? Uh, did I articulate the rules precisely and correctly? Did I state the incorrect rule? Um, did I include rules that were not even relevant, right? So those are questions you can ask yourself in terms of the rule statement. And now in terms of the application, you know, did I um, avoid conclusory statements um, instead of providing supportive analysis. Um, so a conclusory statement would be something like, you know, where you're 
failing to provide explanatory information um, detailing step by step um, how an issue is resolved. So an example of a conclusory statement would be because the because the uh, defendant's intent manifested malice, which is required for murder, he'll be convicted. So that's that statement is conclusory because it's not giving um, a deeper analysis. Another question is, you know, did I explain how the rule applies to the facts? Did I connect the facts to particular elements of the rules? Um, did I include counter arguments where appropriate? Did I provide a complete analysis? Did I argue both sides? So those are some things that you can ask yourself in terms of the application. I see some questions here. Does anybody, um, let's see, Tracy, do you want me to pause and answer any questions? No, why don't you keep going and then uh, we can answer the questions or just- Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right, and so moving on to the conclusion part of your um, exam answer. Some of the questions you can ask, did I state which party is more likely to prevail? Did I explain my reasoning? Um, was I too inconclusive in my conclusion? For example, did I say something like, it depends on what the court decides, right? Either could win, that's inconclusive. Um, on the flip side, was I too decisive in my conclusion? Did I say something like, the plaintiff will definitely win, or you know, the defendant's argument is baseless. You know, those are uh, too de divisive. Um, so those are some helpful questions you can ask for yourself. Another section of this has to do, do with judgment, right? Did you make the right judgment um, as you were writing your exam answer? And it also points to style. So did I spend too much time or too little time on a particular question or issue? You know, did I allocate my time wisely? Did I answer the call of the question? Did I even understand the call of the question, right? Um, did I organize my answer so it was easy for my professor to read and follow? Um, and some of you may think this is a minor point, but was my writing free of grammatical and spelling up errors? You'd be surprised, you know, when it's hard for a professor to, to read um, the answer because it's filled with, you know, all of these um, problems in terms of gr grammatical structure and spelling errors, it could be, you know, he, he or she could all automatically have a bias, right? Oh, this person can't write. They're having problems writing and, um, you know, just have, leaves a negative impression. So those are, those are all things to consider um, in terms of style and judgment. Another point I wanted to make is you know, another question is, you know, did I devote too much space on more introductory, you know, general observations? Did I just go off on a tangent and net, not get right to the point? Um, and maybe I did that because I was trying to put up some filler in my answer because uh, I really didn't know the answer. <laughs> um, you know, did I spend too much time reviewing the facts? Did I spend too much time uh, restating the facts uh, without using those facts in my analysis. So those are some questions that you can ask yourself um, to, to self-diagnose, right? So I hope that was helpful. You know, I know we uh, tackled a lot in terms of looking back um, to our last semester's, um, you know, exam performance. But another part of this, it's to really um, look back at last semester's learning. You know, how did we work? How did we work it day in and day out? So, you know, once you've determined what those problem areas are, now it's time to take some, um, now it's important to take some time to reflect on your prior semester's work. So you may be, um, many of you may be inclined to tell yourself, you know, I'm just gonna work harder. I'm just gonna work harder next semester. That's, you know, that's the answer to everything. I'm just gonna work harder. 
But you know, that's just not sufficient. It's not enough in law school because all of you know, the reality is that every, every law student works hard. You know, we work hard, we're hardworking. Um, instead, you needed to do something differently. And that means putting forth the effort with true step strategy. You know, if you do that, then you can improve. Um, if you just work hard without being smart about it, it's not going to produce um, positive results, right? You're just, you know, kind of spinning your wheel, going like a hamster in a wheel. So um, that's my advice for that. Now take a hard and honest look at last semester study habits. Uh, reflect and take an inventory of how you learned last semester. So in other words, what did your daily study routine look like? You know, did, what did you do day to day? What, what did you do, you know, before the exam? What did you do I mean, before, the, before class? What did you do during class? And then what did you do after class, right? So consider asking yourself these questions to sort of self-diagnose um, how you learned last semester. Uh, so in terms of time management, did you manage your time effectively? Did you start studying early in the semester or did you put it all off, you know, towards um, the reading period? Did you outline as you go or did you wait until the end of the semester to start? So those are some um, hard questions to ask yourself. Uh, in terms of preparing for class, did you read your cases and assign materials passively? Did your eyes just kind of glaze over, right? Uh, without being actively engaged? Or did you read um, and your assignments um, with a critical eye? Did you read them actively, you know, taking notes, um, synthesizing the case, you know, briefing the case so that it's, um, so that you could understand the material in a better way. Now during class, um, you know, you want to be this guy, you want to be, the, <laughs> you want to be the guy that has his video camera on. Um, he's, I, he sort of looks engaged, um, but you know, during class, ask yourself, was I engaged in class or did I, um, did I turn my video off and, you know, eat an entire pizza or check my, uh, check social media? <laughs> did you participate in class discussion? Were you, were you curious? Um, did you take notes verbatim like a court reporter or did you take uh, selective notes? Did you, uh, were you listening more than, than typing everything down, right? So those are things that you can ask yourself um, in terms of what you did during class. Now, after class, um, again, you don't want to be this guy who he looks, well, you know what, you can be the, this guy. I, I feel like everybody is this guy, right? Um, if you were in, confused in class, you know, did you refine your understanding right away, promptly, um, did you consult a study aid right away? Did you ask your professor right away? Did you ask your teaching assistant or study group? Or did you let that confusion just kind of sit in your head for days and days and days? And now the class is on to another topic that had to, um, that was based on the foundation of that first class, right? So what happens is if when you fall behind, it becomes this big mountain and like, oh, now I totally don't understand <laughs> uh, you know, the two of the big doctrines that the professor was um, discussing in class. So you wanna keep up um, and you wanna make sure that you're reviewing your notes uh, after class to fill any gaps in your knowledge and, and put them in your outline, right? Um, so in other words, I highly, highly recommend, and I can't stress this enough to, to you know, add bit by bit to your outlines throughout the semester. And I, you know, it starts right now. We're at the beginning of the semester and um, this is the time, you don't, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's something to put down on paper and you're translating complex materials into something that you understand. 
So I would do it as you go throughout the semester. Now, ask yourself in terms of studying with others, uh, if you did use a study group, was it productive? Was it a good use of your time? Um, if it wasn't, if it was a big time waster, you know, are you going to reconsider that arrangement arrangement for this semester? You know, do you think you'll work more effectively alone? Or um, are you going to maybe ask um, to have a study buddy? Maybe there's one person in class that you feel really comfortable with that has a good grasp of the material and is eager to learn. You want, maybe that'll be your study buddy. There's no rule that you have to have, you know, a certain number in your study group. Um, so just ask, you know, what is a good use of your time? What time is short? So you want to make sure that it's a, a good, efficient and productive use of your time. Another question to ask is, um, you know, did you use the study aids, the commercial outlines as a crutch? Um, I think outlines, commercial outlines can be very, very helpful. Um, to, to fill in any gaps in your learning. But, you know, if you just relied on them solely, um, I think that that could, that could uh, be problematic. So, you know, you're really using, the purpose of the commercial outlines is to um, help compare your grasp of the concepts, right? So they're really supplemental. Um, and so in terms of outlining, you know, was your outline riddled with case facts and, you know, unnecessary information? Um, did you include everything, you know, everything and anything? If you can see this picture here, it's this person is outlined, I mean, outlined, um, uh, highlighted the entire, entire case. So you want to make sure that your outline is a customized, usable, condensed study tool to help you prepare for exam. That's all it is. It is just there to um, help you for the exams. You're not gonna turn in your 100 page outline to your professor, right? You guys all know this by now. The outline has to be usable, right? Okay. So did you talk to your professors at all? You know, did you ask questions? to clarify and solidify the material that you're learning in class? Um, did you ask for suggestions on how to prepare for exams? Sometimes, you know, you, if I were you, I would ask everybody for this, you know, this tip. How can I prepare for exams? Get some information from your professors directly and you might be able to get some good insight for um, what your professor expects, you know, in terms of organizing an exam answer. So I would definitely uh, take advantage of office hours with your professor or with your teaching assistant. Okay, did you take advantage of your school's academic support program? Um, Often these programs provide uh, workshops on study skills. Um, I do a workshop on um, exams as well as you know, outlining, uh, preparing, prepping for class. Those are all really, really helpful. And um, did I attend the review sessions conducted by the teaching assistants? You know, ask yourself, did I really take advantage of these amazing resources available to help me? Um, did you meet with your teaching assistants uh, for guidance on how, like study strategies, like just asking your tea, like how do you prepare for exams? Just, or what does your outline look like? You know, just um, getting some helpful tips can go a long way. Uh, did, did you talk to upper level peers who were successful um, in law school their first year? So uh, definitely um, seek those people. And this, my friends, I cannot stress how important this is. It's testing yourself. So did you test your knowledge by working through hypotheticals? Did you answer as many practice exam questions you could find? And I highlighted this and I said, 
be voracious. And I mean like be voracious in your learning. Try to get your hands on as many practice exam questions you can find. Um, at Chicago Kent, we have an exam database. Um, students can, can look at practice exams um, from the professors. And you can also, another uh, tip that I have is you can check out West Academic Study Aids. You know, a lot of those study aids provide sample practice exams and they even have the answer keys, which are super helpful. So um, there are so many ways in which you can um, get your hands on practice exams. Um, and uh, I just, this is probably the, the most important tip I have for you. Uh, to, to improve your grades for second semester. Make this um, almost a, as, well, as regular as you know, brushing your teeth. Make it a regular habit. Get comfortable with it. I know it's uncomfortable, right? But if you do it now, right, and you, and you get used to it, you start, it, it starts becoming fun. I don't know, it's like fun, but... <laughs> It, you know, you feel like you're learning and you're and you're working through these hard problems and you're starting, you know, the light bulb starts to come come on. And that's what's amazing about uh, about being a lawyer is that you're being hired to listen to your client, which is a long right. It's like a long fact pattern. And you're trying to figure out, you know, what are um, the main issues uh, that I have to resolve for my client. Right. And coming up with the solution. That's pretty exciting. So if you can look at your higher purpose, you know, why you're here in law school, doing your doing as many practice exams, you're gonna start to see these patterns. And um, when you see them, it's practice. So when you see them on a real exam, you'll be like, I remember doing this. I remember doing, I remember reading this exact same fact pattern, similar, different names, when I was sitting you know, on the dining room table, <laughs> having my cup of coffee where it was low stakes. So when it's high stakes, you'd be like, you know, I'm pretty familiar with that. And you're gonna build your confidence. So make this a regular habit and, and get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Okay. Now we're gonna move into developing an action plan. And I have to say that, you know, F, this is gonna look very different um, for each student depending on his or her problem areas, right? Uh, but I do have to say what is true for all students is this thing called time management. And I know when, you know, some, when I say time management, the, the eyes start to, you know, the students will do the eye roll. And I understand that. Because you hear it over again, manage your time, manage your time. But that is really the key, is managing your time. Um, your time and your attention are so valuable. You know, we, I can't stop time. You can't stop time. But what we can do, we can take control over our schedules. We really can. Um, so I once asked, um, a top student, she was in uh, one of my classes and she ended up being you know, the top student across, across the board. I said, you know, Claire, what strategies helped you, if you could name one strategy, the best strategy that helped you succeed your first year, what was it? And she said, you gotta treat law school like a job. And so that really resonated with me because I was thinking, you know, what did she do to make it like a job. And what she did during law school was that she got a good night's sleep. Every night she got good night's sleep. She woke up at a reasonable time. Um, she worked throughout the day, work meaning studying, reviewing, prepping for exams, working out outline, outlines, doing practice exams. She worked throughout the day like she would at a job. And then she stopped. Then she stopped studying at a certain time each night, a reasonable time, and she stopped. And then she did it again and again and again. What she didn't do was she did not procrastinate and she did not cram. She didn't pull any all-nighters. 
She didn't wait until the last, to the end of the semester to start her outlines. Um, she didn't wait until, you know, um, the reading period to uh, do some practice exams. She did it throughout the process um, and she was disciplined. I think that's another word that I get comfortable with the uncomfortable and be disciplined and you can, you will definitely see progress. So in other words, if she had a couple hours in between class, um, she did not waste even two hours of her day. She didn't waste her time checking email, checking, you know, surfing the web, shopping, online shopping. Um, she was like, oh man, I have two hours between, you know, property and evidence. And those two hours, I'm gonna maximize my time. I'm gonna hit the nail on the head. I'm gonna get this done and choose a machine. And that's what you gotta do. You know, at work, yeah, we take some breaks here and there, but um, we're expected, right? To, to produce good work, to work hard, to prepare for our meetings. And so that's the same thing as a law student is treating um, the time here like, a, like it's your a job. It's like it's a job, a nine to five job. Okay, so what do successful students do? They don't just work harder and longer. Remember I said at the beginning of the talk, um, everybody works hard, right? You can't just go into this semester saying, I'm going to just work harder. Um, they work smarter. That's what successful students do. They gain insight from professors and they gain insight from others. They attend um, as many review sessions as they can. Um, they ask questions, they raise their hand, they're curious, they want to understand the, uh, the concepts, they crave the feedback. So whenever you start doubting yourself and you're saying, oh, this question is going to be stupid, I'm just going to keep my mouth quiet, I'm going to put my video off, I'm just going to hide, you're not engaged. So, you know, really, really crave understanding the material, crave the feedback, ask your professors, you know, what can I do differently this time? Um, and even when you're asking um, professors from the prior semester and you're like, well, you know, I don't have this professor for this semester, you should still ask because um, many of these professors, um, they teach upper level classes too. The chances are you might bump into them. We're a small community, right? You wanna be, the student that craves learning, that craves the feedback, that wants to get better, that's curious, that asks questions, is going to make going to law school more meaningful for you. For you, it's not going to be um, uh, something that you dread, right? So if we're excited about learning and we're curious, we want to do the work, we want to engage with our colleagues and our professors, and we want to get better. Okay, the, the other bu bullet hole here is to test yourself frequently and um, start, you can even start now. Like, let's say you're understanding, um, you're reading uh, adverse possession in property. Um, if you just take a look at a fact pattern under you know, the heading of adverse um, possession, you start to read the fact pattern and be like, this is real life. I could see this. And, you know, and that starts making connections, neural connections in your brain. Like this, I'm attaching meaning to something that I already know because it's a story, right? So then you tend to understand the, the material. It doesn't become so esoteric. You can bring it um, grounded into something that's like real life. And so that will be helpful for you in, in um, memorizing the black letter law and applying right, um, doing the analysis. So test yourself, it'll be really helpful for you. And then, um, and the success, successful students, they manage their time wisely, like I said, they, um, they prepare um, and they stick to a schedule. 
Um, something that I do even now is I schedule, you know, a time for myself to work out like for the, like one hour, I'm going to be doing this and I'm just going to focus on this because this is what I need to do <laughs> to bring those endorphins up to have more energy so I can tackle the next three hours where I'm going to be sitting down and, you know, grading papers or something like that. So, you know, put, put those things in your schedule and, and uh, do your best to stick with it um, and plan out your week. So manage your time wisely. Uh, and so I just have some last words of advice for all of you. And that is, you know, if you still feel at a loss with all of this and you're still, um, you know, if you're still down in the dumps, I, I really encourage you to get some help uh, you know, contrary to popular belief, uh, A students didn't complete law school entirely on their own. Their successful students just, they don't do it by themselves. <laughs> it's impossible, not in law school. They got help. Um, they asked for the feedback. They asked for help. And, and that's, that's awesome that you are in a community of learners. Everybody wants to learn. And this is a great, um, uh, this is a rigorous um, uh, study uh, of law and um, you're with people that, that are similar and they, they, they wanna achieve, they wanna do better. So get the help that you need. And remember, one semester of bad grades is not gonna define you. Not once did I have a client walk into my office requesting to see my 1L towards grade. I never had that ever, 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 ever. So don't waste your time and energy lamenting about last semester. I know it's hard, um, but I'd rather you take all of that energy, that time and energy, and I want you to put that into something positive, you know, like figuring out um, what did I do wrong last semester? What can I do better for this semester? How can, how can I make that improvement? So that's, I want you to spend time on that. Um, so I hope this was helpful for you. Um, it's close to my heart because I have been in your shoes. Um, when I received my first semester grades, uh, I, was, I was pretty devastated. And unfortunately, um, I did go through law school, just kind of, you know, cruising on by and keeping my head low. And it wasn't until um, later in life, you know, in my, um, I'm, I'm not gonna tell you my age, but later in life, when I discovered um, that there's joy in learning and there's joy in improving, um, but I've gotta be open to that criticism and be open to the feedback so I can really start implementing strategies that will help me succeed. So I, I, I pray and I hope that you'll take some of these um, strategies into consideration and, and be open to what's ahead because I do have confidence in all of you. I know that you will be um, successful lawyers and um, one semester of mediocre or you know, disappointing grades, it doesn't define you at all, okay? All right. Great. We have a couple questions here that sure. I'd like to share. Yeah. So we, in the first one deals with time management. Mm -hmm. If you're a part-time student that's working full time, do you have any advice on how to structure time so you can treat law school like a job? Oh, it's such a good question. Yes, I do have some advice for that. It is being uh, rigid with every minute that you have. So for me, um, you know, since I have a, an eight-year-old daughter and I'm working from home, um, you know, from nine to five, I've got to be available, right? Because in case the dean wants to talk to me or students want to talk to me, so that's my work time. But like, if you're, if I was in your shoes and I had to study, right? I had this other part of my life that I had to dedicate myself to. I would really take a hard look at my nine to five schedule. And is there a way for me to get up a little bit earlier where it's quiet 
So what I do is before my husband gets up, before my daughter gets up, I will carve, I will carve two hours, sometimes three. I won't tell you what time I get up in the morning because it's really early, but I will, I've incorporated discipline where it just becomes a part of me. So I'll get up super early. Okay, I'll tell you, I'll get up at like sometimes 4.30 or five, that's just me. Um, but I will be super hyper-focused in the three hour block that I have to start working on the things that um, you know, maybe writing an article or, you know, doing, doing something that's related to my profession, but not within nine to five. So for you, it'd be three hours. If I were in your shoes, three hours of dedicated, like I'm a machine, I'm up. I got my breakfast on my coffee. I'm going to hammer through this and I'm going to be strategic in my studying. And I'm going to feel good about that so that I can conquer the rest of the day. So my advice to you is really the simple one is to be very rigid um, and, and treat that part like the job, getting up really early. And um, I live by my calendar and I put everything in blocks so that I see it. And so prepare even for the next day by looking at that schedule for the next day and being, okay, I know I'm gonna be getting up at that. So like. I'm going to be getting up at 4.30 in the morning and from 4.30 to 7.30, I'm going to be ultra focused on this one thing. I hope that helps. So along those lines though, with being rigid and setting schedules, would that, would you do the same thing when you're trying to, to, um, to balance required reading and time to reflect, review, reflect and outline your work through pr uh, practice problems? So are you asking me, would I use the same tactic for prepping for classes? Sorry, I missed what you were saying. Sure. I guess, you know, the same tactics as in being, you know, rigid and setting a schedule with, with dividing your time between reading and then actually, you know, prepping with uh, reviewing, reflecting and outlining your practice problem. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, I, I would, um, I think, um, some practical advice there is I still think that you should be doing the, um, you know, before class, you would be reading your assigned materials and you were briefing your cases. Um, and then, you know, during class, you're making sure you're taking selective notes. And then after class, you're adding to your outline, you're synthesizing the material. Um, and then I would reserve, so Monday through Friday, that's like, you know, your classes. And then on the weekends, I would take that time to, you know, start working on those outlines bit by bit. Um, some students do it, you know, right after class, they'll put it in their outline. Some other students wait until the weekend, they'll use Saturday, right? Saturday, all day Saturday, just to work on outlines. So it really depends on you, but I do think that, yeah, the same strategies apply. It's, it's you know, law school is all time management and it's discipline. And so um, I do, one word advice with this, with all of this is that you don't want to, you don't want to wait um, until the end of the semester, you want to, like, if you're not understanding a concept, it's like, boom, right away. You're reaching out to a TA, you're reaching out to a professor, you're looking at your commercial outline to kind of figure, to truly understand. Because a lot of what happens with law is that um, it, they're building blocks, right? So you've got to understand this. You've got to understand offer. You've got to understand consideration. You've got to understand acceptance, understand what constitutes a valid contract. So, you know, each principle builds on the other principles. So you don't want to get lost because then at the end, it's, it's a problem. So I do think the practice exams, even while you're during the week, it doesn't take that much time, right? Just to read a short paragraph or a mini hypo and just to see a model answer. That's just how you're reinforcing the learning. So I would, I would start with the uh, practice exams, meaning you know you're not sitting there doing under time conditions at the beginning of the semester. It's just reading through it and understanding the material through the practice exams and the model answers. So, sorry, I went on a tangent on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, in in regards to practice exams, 
um, for the essay exam, are there any resources where you can actually get feedback based on your answers to the essay portion? Uh, I don't, yeah, I, I think you'd have to get that directly from your professor. Um, you know, sometimes professors have grading criteria or like a, what they call rubric. And so um, that's how they allocate points for the, for the um, essays, um, for the essay answers. So that's why I always recommend that students um, for your particular, you know, uh, uh, exam answer to actually go to the professor and say, would you happen to, you know, could we review like what did I miss or I think I, I think I hit all the issues, but you know, I'm just trying to understand. Um, that way you're, you're, you're catching some, some loopholes, right? And maybe how you write the exam answer, or maybe there's an error in, in how you understood the law. So um, I, I doubt any professor is gonna say, no, I don't wanna have, I don't wanna meet with you. Professors always wanna meet with their students, right? If you're really trying to, to understand and to learn, they'll be always be open for that appointment. It's just gonna be helpful too, you know? And, and you may be surprised because through that meeting, you might get more insight, right? Into law school exam strategies. You'll be like, oh, you know, your professor might like, give you a really good, you know, golden nut and be like, now I understand. Oh, there's some trigger words I can use, transition sentences I can use when I write, you know, however, because um, thus, you know, these are things that, that could be really helpful for you for all of your classes. So, um, I do recommend, you know, meet with your professor. If you feel intimidated, meet with your, uh, the teaching assistant. Um, these are upper level students that have taken the class for most law schools, they've taken the class and they've done very well in the class and they understand the professor's style. So um, definitely use those resources. Okay, great. Um, I think we have time for one more question here. Sure. And it has to deal with any recommendations that you have for supplements or resources to help improve legal writing skills, especially the rule application portion. Um, I do. I mean, I do think that the um, the the West academic study aids, am I West academic something study aids. Um, they have uh, wonderful resources. And I don't know if you've heard of Cali, um, but these are um, online, like sort of like mini courses on um, different topics, su even substantive areas of law. Uh, but there are um, Cali lessons in, in uh, legal writing, which I have found very helpful. And, um, and generally the law schools have, um, they may have a writing, you know, a center or a writing specialist. You should definitely reach out to your academic um, support program director and they can point you in the right direction. But what I do is the writing specialist, I'll sit down and have one-on-one -on -one meetings while I, where I will review a sample, um, you know, brief or memo and we'll go through um, the analytical paradigm together and give suggestions. So that's what I would do. Um, I would, uh, you know, Cali lessons, um, some of the commercial aids out there are helpful. And then definitely your um, academic support program can be a good resource. Great, well, thank you everyone for joining us today and a special thank you to Professor Young. We hope that you'll join us for upcoming virtual office hours programming. Please visit the ABA Young, I'm sorry, the ABA Law Student Division website for the full lineup. So everyone take care and good luck this semester. Thank you. Bye everyone.